What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got an unboxing here with two pretty awesome books in it. Both of these books are from runs that I would call underappreciated, under the radar, whatever you want to call it, something like that, because I've had some people in the comments asking about what are some of those pre-code horror titles that you might want to start looking at or go after that don't cost quite as much. And these two are from those runs. And so I thought I'd talk about those a little bit, go over some of those titles as well, and some of the key issues in them after you check out these books. So let's get into it. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So like I said in the intro, I've got two books in here and they are both from runs that I would consider undervalued. I don't like really the word undervalued, but maybe under the radar. Ones that I feel like don't get quite the attention that they generally would deserve if they were in other titles with the cover content, everything like that. And I have people ask somewhat regularly about what types of titles they might want to go after or look at that are a little more affordable because a lot of the times when you've got things like pre-code horror, golden age stuff, uh, they can be really pricey when you start to get to those key issues or issues that have cover content that people are really going after. And so these ones both seem like they're a little bit under the radar to me right now. And so we'll open this up, we'll check out these books, and then, like I said, we'll go over some more of those key issues from each of those runs so you can get an idea uh, what they're, what's out there. But one of these books is a raw book, and so I do plan on getting that one pressed and cleaned and graded. And that brings us to the sponsor of this video, the Comic Book Presser. If you've watched my CGC unboxings on this channel, almost all of those books were pressed and cleaned by the Comic Book Presser before getting graded by CGC. He does incredible work on all kinds of books. I've had him press Golden Age books from 1940 all the way up to Moderns from 2020, Silver Age magazines, and everything in between. He has very reasonable prices and is also a CGC certified dealer and will pass his savings on to you if you have him submit your books through him. If you're looking to get some books pressed and clean, make sure to check him out on Instagram and through his website. His contact information is in the details of this video. All right, so we're back. Let's check out the books that are in these. And uh, I don't know, I feel like I just got to kind of say this every once in a while, it seems, unfortunately. Um, but I got to remind people, you know, that this hobby or business or whatever you want to call it that, that we're in, you know, collecting comics, we're collecting comics. You, you know, I feel like it's unfortunate that I have to say it, but it's sometimes people just take it a little too seriously. I've had a couple issues in the last, I don't know, a couple weeks with people that I've, I've been dealing with, with, with selling books. And, you know, I just got to say, like, trying to treat people with a little bit of respect out there. I had one guy threaten to, to beat me up because I wouldn't hand deliver a book to him, which is the reason why I don't hand deliver books to people because you never know, you know, who you might be delivering or might be, you know, meeting with something like that. I mean, come on, you know, comics. Then I had another guy that got really angry at me uh, because he, because I, I sent the book with uh, signature confirmation because that meant he had to go to the post office I guess and pick it up but I, I mean when I'm dealing with a book that's over a certain price point I always use signature confirmation it's for my insurance but it's also because I know if that book gets stolen off someone's porch or something like that that they're going to blame me and then I'm going to have to give the refund and everything and so you know, the signature confirmation, it's to make sure that it's to help ensure that they get the book, but it's also to protect me as someone who is selling that book. So, you know, just remember, <laughs> we're, we're collecting comic books. You know, you don't have to take everything so seriously. Don't be threatening people, you know, anything like that. None of that is necessary. But let's check out these two books. Uh, and so the first one here, so like I said, these are both from titles that I think are underappreciated right now that you could definitely or I could see these ones getting a little more attention and I'd say one of them at least has been getting a little more attention but I still think it's under the radar the first one is shadow comics this is the one when when I have people ask 
you know, what title do I think doesn't get the appreciation that you expect it to? Shadow Comics. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Shadow Comics, uh, it's actually, from what I understand, at least from like the pulp era, this character, the Shadow, is who Batman was based on. And so I think that's kind of a cool thing that, that goes with him. But Shadow Comics has what I would call a lot of pretty cool pre-code horror style titles. You know, things that have skulls on them or like bondage covers or beheading covers, that kind of thing. We'll go over those different key covers later in this video, but this is one of them. And this one just really jumped out at me. You know, you've got a ton of skulls on here. You've also got this creepy goblin guy with the, the knife that has the, you know, blood all over it and everything like that. I just thought this was a really cool cover. And so I ended up picking this one up. Here's the back. And so this one is Shadow Comics Volume 3, Number 12. And that's something that you'll actually see is consistent between both of these. And one of the things that I, I don't know if it's if it's the reason or not, but I feel like it's one of the things that, that hurts these books. And it's the numbering system that's used for them. It's not like it just goes one, two, three, four, five, like you get with Batman or Tales from the Crypt or uh, Action Comics, any of that kind of stuff where it's a really easy numbering system. It has these volumes where I believe generally it's each volume is 12 issues and then it just restarts at volume two, then volume three, four, five, six, and so on. And so I think that that numbering system is one of the things that actually kind of hurts hurts these books because it always makes it just a, a little bit harder to uh, to basically talk about the book. You know, you go like, oh, it's issue number 12. And it's like, oh, well, which volume? And so then you got to go and try to, you know, it's on the cover, but it just, it makes it a little more troublesome with the books. But this one was really cool with the skulls and everything like that. So uh, Shadow Comics, and from 1944, 50, Shadow Comics, Volume 3, Number 12. Now, since I was talking about the volumes and the issue numbers, some of you, if you're, you know, familiar with the, the Golden Age runs and that kind of thing, might know which series I'm going to be talking about next. And this one, and it's got a sticker on it that says 125 It was definitely not $125. I don't know when it was that, but not any time recently. But this one is Super Mystery Comics. And this is volume one, number three. And this is a extremely rare book. Now you can tell this one will probably get a brittle pages designation. Um, I think it, the cover was supposed to be attached, uh, but it's definitely not. Um, you can, it's got some pretty substantial splits, one here and then one here. I think that's much worse than what it was at when it was originally I don't know, in the original listing. I'll have to check, but it doesn't really matter to me. I, I mean, I was expecting it to be a low grade. I think they had it as like a 1.5 or a 1.8 or something. I don't remember for sure. Um, but this one is this, you know, cool bondage cover. And you've got, I think this is Magno. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Magno on the cover. Um, but yeah, this book is extremely rare. These pretty, a, a lot of these books that are early on in this run are pretty rare, but there are some really cool covers that are part of this super mystery uh, comics run and they do the same type of thing they do volumes and issue numbers and so uh, it's got that same issue or same you know kind of like difficulty that you have with shadow comics where it's not just a consecutive set of numbers that, that, that climbs up you get you know volume one issue one volume two issue one all that kind of thing um, and so I think that's one of the things that just makes these a little a little bit more difficult on the the collecting side but this book, I think I've only seen this one come up for sale twice in the last like three years. Both of them are raw copies. And uh, so I decided to pick this one up because, you know, when it's a book that you really never see come up for sale, then, you know, if you get an opportunity, you take that chance and you pick it up. And I actually think the cover art on this one's pretty good. And it, even though it's going to be a low grade, it's a pretty solid presenting copy. And that's a you know, that's something I'm really always looking for when I'm talking about low grade books. Now let's get into checking out some of these other really cool issues that are in this run as well as the Shadow Comics run. All right, so here we are on Go Collect. I, I like using this for this type of video because I can show pictures of the covers, that kind of thing more easily because that's not something that GPA readily shows. So we're gonna start with the Super Mystery Comics run. You can see, even on Go Collect, <laughs> there's a little bit of confusion here where it says this is Super Mystery Comics number one, but this is actually volume three, number one. And so you can see here, we've got, well, is just a pretty cool pre-code horror cover. Let's take a look at it. 
you've got whatever this uh, monster, lizard monster, whatever it is here with the, you know, the woman in the red dress, the, the typical golden age trope in trouble. And you've got uh, these uh, two characters, I think it's Magno flying in to, to save the day. And this is now, you can see how rare these books are. So you do have to keep your eyes open when they come up for sale. And this one, actually, I had never seen this one come up for sale until I think just about a week ago. And it actually went for a, a huge number for a 6.0. And you can see how rare this book is. You've got the census over here, just eight copies on the census. And there was a 6.0 here that sold for $3,000. $360 on January 31st. So that was that was a really strong sale. There are other ones on here though, don't worry, that are much more affordable. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to spend thousands of dollars. But this is the title. You know, the, the title often looks the same. This is the title that you really want to keep your eyes open for. So now let's move on to the next one. This is Super Mystery Comics Volume 3, number two. Again, not a lot of copies on the census, just 10 universal copies on the census. But again, you can see this one has some pretty cool content. Not the best art up here on this uh, this goblin monster here, but you've got the the you know the again the woman in the red dress, you know uh, bondage cover. You've got these guys rushing in to save the day. One of these types of covers that generally, if this was in another title, would be extremely expensive. Now an 80 is a high grade, but you know so an 80 a year back in uh, September of 2022 went for seven thousand dollars, but just jump down a little bit and you can see a 6.0 it says sold for 315. I actually want to take a look at that to see if that's, yeah, 6.0 on eBay auction sold for $315. That person probably got a total steal, but that's the thing. This is the type of book that it's risky to auction these, especially on eBay. Probably not so much on something like Heritage where you have a lot of people that are really looking for golden age pre-code horror, but Man, on eBay, wow! If that really went for three hundred fifteen dollars, that is a that is a total steal for that book. But let's jump back and see some of these other sales here. So you can see that the sales that have happened more recently generally are higher grades, going for sixteen hundred and a seven zero, two thousand for an eight zero. But the reality is that's not a lot of money for a high grade book like that from nineteen forty two. So this is the type of thing that you want to keep your eyes open for. Let's move on to the next one. And we've got Super Mystery Comics Volume 3, Number 3. This one isn't so much a pre-code horror cover, but an early robot cover. This is 1943. See here, we've got this cool robot cover. You got the flames and everything. Again, woman in the red dress in trouble. Uh, whoever this guy is, this knight. I'm not super familiar with all the characters. I'm guessing he is the sword. Uh, but, but you can see there are some really cool covers in this run that you know, if you don't know to look for them, you probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't even realize that these are out there, especially because the census count is relatively low. Again, just 17 on the census, but then let's go down to see the prices and you can see here a 3.0 going for, let's see, uh, a 3.0 going for $960 just on January 31st this year, uh, going for 566 on June 5th of 2022. And so you see, really not that expensive. These are pretty affordable books with some really cool covers that are that are part of this run. All right, so now let's keep moving on. And now we've got Super Mystery Comics number six. Uh, again, they don't have the volume number, so let's let's check that on one of these issues because I don't remember offhand which which volume this is. So this is volume three, number six. So this one, again, this is where you're getting into some pretty violent pre-code horror content. I mean, let's take a look at this one. You've got this, you know, axe or not axe, a saw machine here uh, with, I believe that's a skull on the floor there. You've got these people who are about to get their heads cut off. I mean, super violent cover. And this one, again, it's for what's on there for that cover content. I just don't think it's all that expensive. Uh, let's take a look at some of these prices. So we've got a 6.0 that went for 2,280. I mean, think of, like the beheading covers for EC, where you've got a beheading cover and it's a, a 6.0 is going to go for $12,000 or so for that crime suspense stories number 22. I mean, you've got a 3.5 in October of last year, it's going for $1,000, a 2.0 in 2020 going for 338. I mean, yeah, they don't come up for sale very often, but they aren't that expensive and there's some really cool covers. So uh, again, just 15 universal copies on the census, relatively rare book, 
but I have seen this one come up for sale a few times in the last year or so. I think I saw a raw copy, maybe two raw copies come up for sale as well. So it's the type of thing that you want to keep your eyes open for. Let's move on to the next one. Here we've got, I mean, there are a lot of, of pre-code horror covers that, well, not a lot, but some that have this type of content where you've got, you know, like a, a cauldron with skulls that somebody's going to get boiled in or tossed in, that kind of thing that, that go for substantial amounts of money. And this one, I mean, here we've got a nine six for five thousand two hundred eighty. That's not very much money for a nine six from nineteen forty five. And then we move down into the the lower grades. We had a five five going for five hundred and seventy six dollars, just about a hundred dollars a point. I mean, these are really reasonable prices for these types of books and ones that if if you're looking for some cool pre code horror content. Uh, that isn't going to necessarily break the bank on you and you can still get some decent presenting copies. I'm telling you, this run is really something to watch out for. You can actually see a few more copies on the census of this one, actually 22 copies. All right, now let's check out the next one. We've got Super Mystery Comics Volume 5, Number 3. I think this is a super cool cover. This one always reminds me of that Dynamic Comics cover. I think it's, is it Dynamic Comics 11? Let's check. Uh... I think it's Dynamic Comics 11. Yeah, this one right here, Dynamic Comics 11, where you've got this guy with these test tubes and everything. It's a, a Gus Rica cover. Uh, but this one just reminds me of that. It has a very similar feel to me as that one. And now this one is a little pricier, but still not really ridiculous. When you're talking about an 8.0 going for 3360 in just uh, January of last year, then you've got a 4-0 going for 15.60, a 3-0 going for 900 just in September of last year. So, yeah, I mean, you've got it's not like these are cheap, but they aren't prohibitively expensive either. And you get some really cool Golden Age cover content. I mean, I think that's a pretty cool cover. So, yeah, I think it really has a vibe of that Dynamic Comics 11. All right, let's check out the next one. Now we've got Super Mystery Comics Volume 6, Number 3. This is definitely a desirable cover. This is probably one of the top covers from the run. I just thought this was a cool cover, wanted to show it. And this one is not cheap. You can see an 8.5 went for $25,200. This is the Ohio pedigree in November of last year. I mean, check out that copy. That is an amazing copy. It was from the Black Cat Collection. And wow, yeah. Just an incredible copy of that book. But this is an example of one where you can have some very expensive covers from this run, but they're pretty few and far between. You have a lot of other options that are very affordable. But uh, this one, this one, you're, you're probably going to be spending a, a few thousand dollars no matter what the grade is. You can see back in 2020, even a 2.0 went for 1500 But I just wanted to show this one because I think this is an example of a, one of the really pretty cool covers from this run where you've basically got like a giant paper cutting machine, but a, a person, <laughs> a person is inside of it. All right, let's check out the ne next one. We've got two more from this run. This is another one that's getting more popular. This book used to be surprisingly cheap, but it is definitely getting more and more popular, more demand when it comes up for sale. I do see this one pop up for sale every once in a while. It's got 23 copies on the census. Let's check out those prices. I mean, we've got a 5.0 that in September of last year went for $840, really not too bad. A 6.5 in March of last year went for 660 Now, when you're getting into the higher grades, 8.5 went for 1440 but still not that expensive for, you know, this is a pretty cool cover. I've always thought this one was, was fun where you've got this butcher's knife, basically looks like it was thrown at them, stuck in the wall here. But yeah, I've always thought this is a pretty cool one. And this is one that I definitely see kind of on the rise. It has been getting more and more expensive as I see it come up for sale, but still very reasonable prices. You know, when you're getting mid-grade copies for a book from 1947 going in the, you know, not even breaking a thousand dollars, that's really not, not all that bad. So I thought this is a pretty cool one. And then the last one from this run, and then we'll move on to Shadow Comics was Super Mystery Comics number four. Again, I don't remember which see which one this is. So this is volume eight, number four. And let's take a close look at this. This is from the Promise Collection. So a 9.6, just an absurdly high grade, cool skull cover, but it's these skull masks. You can see all these kind of like hooded cultists probably wearing them with these skull masks, this guy getting punched in the face. 
but I just thought this is a super cool cover. But you can see a 9.6 went for $4,080 from the Promise Collection. That is nothing. I mean, put that up against any other major pre-code horror title in a 9.6 going for $4,000 would be almost unheard of. And then if we look at some other grades, obviously it doesn't sell very often. Let's see how many are on census. Just eight copies on census, but you had a 6.5 going for 333 back in 2019. But this is definitely one that you would have to keep your eyes open for to be able to have a chance for it because I'm sure I saw that Promise Collection copy sell but I don't really ever remember seeing this book come up for sale. So definitely the, the type of stuff that you just want to keep your eyes open for this title, you know, maybe put a, a search into eBay where it's looking for super mystery comics. And then just whenever they come up for sale, somebody lists one, then it gives you that opportunity to try to find it or put the search on to whatever it is, heritage or comic link or comic connect where they have different types of uh, options to let you know about books that are coming up for sale. But yeah, all right. So now let's move on to Shadow Comics. First one here. This is a pretty iconic cover from the run. Definitely not cheap. This is Shadow Comics Volume 1, Number 4. And it's, you know, a beheading cover. And so, yeah, it's content that people are usually trying to, you know, pick up. It's one of these more painted style covers. And this one, you can see it's it's not prohibitively expensive again. Now, when you get up to the 5.5, there was a huge sale in the 5.5, $6,600 in November of last year. But in uh, August of 2021, three five went for $1,300. You're, I mean, you're not going to see these books come up for sale very often, but I don't know if this 6,600 price was just kind of an outlier or if that would be we continue to see those types of prices if this book comes up again. But this is the type of one that you just need to be aware that it exists. And then you give yourself an opportunity to pick it up when it comes up for sale. And let's check out the next one here. Now, I think this is a super cool skull cover. I have seen this one come up, I think, raw in an Instagram sale once. Uh, this was Shadow Comics Volume 2, number 10. Awesome skull cover. This one, I really like the, you know, like the the burning embers kind of in the eyes there. I think that looks super cool. You've got the, the skull hands here with the spider. You've got, you know, this gun battle going on. I think this is a super cool cover. Definitely one that I would be looking for if, if I, I, I'd be looking to pick this one up if I saw it coming up for sale, but yeah, it doesn't come up very often, but you can see how cheap some of these books were, you know, just in 2017, a 7.5 went for $574. And the, the raw one that I think I saw sell did not, they, they didn't ask very much. I mean, it's really hard to price stuff like this when you've only got 16 copies on the census. They don't come up for sale very often, but this is a super cool cover. And if you don't know it exists, you don't know to look for it. And so I wanted to make sure I pointed that one out. All right, now the next one here, we've got Shadow Comics Volume 3, number 11. This is another one that I have seen this come up in an Instagram live sale. I don't remember who the seller was. I just think this is a super cool looking, it's almost like a painted cover effect, but you've got, it's not quite a painted cover here, but you have this skeleton here strangling this woman. Pretty crazy cover. It's a pretty, you know, dark looking cover, but Again, one that just isn't all that expensive. You have a 6.5 going for $1,600 in July of 2022. And yeah, $1,600 might sound like a lot, but put that in comparison to other books from the era. I, I mean, this is 1944. Pre-code horror barely exists at this point. This would be very, very early compared to any other type of skull or skeleton covers. And so, I mean, this is effectively groundbreaking type covers for comics. There were definitely earlier covers in pulps, that kind of thing that, that had this type of content. But for comics, this is really groundbreaking type covers. And to have them go for, for this cheap, I mean, a 3.5 <laughs> selling for $125 in 2020 was probably an eBay sale. Yeah, an eBay auction sale. I mean, a 3.5 for $125. Just, I mean, that's that's crazy to think about for this book from 1944. And so I, I just think this is a, a cool one to be aware of and just make sure that you, you know, you've got it on your watch list if it's something you're looking for. All right, now we've got Shadow Comics Volume 4, number two. Again, another beheading cover. This one's, again, pretty violent. It's like a vat of blood. You've got whatever this 
demon head is here or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Looks like the shadow is actually holding it. I mean, super violent cover, especially for, again, 1944. And I mean, check out these prices. An 8.5 in 2020 going for $1,835. The 7.5 in 2021 going for $1,440. Uh, a 6.5 going for 1560 in 2021. I mean, just not all that expensive. Here you've got a 2.0 from just uh, November or no, October of last year going for $676. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you want to keep your eyes open for because I mean, you would easily miss this auction on eBay. And I bet the person who got this one was very happy that they caught this auction and they were able to pick this one up. I mean, look, only seven bids for that book. So yeah, super cool. Now let's move on. We've got Shadow Comics Volume Four, Number Seven. This one has a feel like a lot of the uh, the later Eerie comics, just a bunch of skulls on the cover. But it's, again, 1944. And I mean, check out these prices: an eight five in 2020 going for five hundred and seventy six dollars, a seven zero in 2020 going for four thirty two. I mean, these prices just aren't very high. Now, yes. There are only 23 copies on census. These are not common books, but I think that's one of those things that it it both hurts it and helps it because sometimes when you have really low census count books, you can have really high prices because of it. But if people don't know about them, if they aren't aware of them, then the prices stay depressed. And you can see that you know books like this, if this was in any other type of title that was a really popular title, like if this was part of Punch Comics or something like that, this book would probably sell for five times as much, 10 times as much in these types of grades. Uh, but in this one, I mean, a few hundred dollars, you can get a nice high grade copy. I mean, let's check this out. We've got an eight five. I mean, look at that. Look at the colors on this book. Just incredible for an eight five off white pages from 1944. Super cool skull cover and, you know, goes for $576. All right, we've got two more here. This one, I've seen this one come up a couple times. I always think this is a super cool cover. There's just something about it that I, I like with this cover. And again, it's just not very expensive. You had a 6 0, a 6 0, sell for $305 on an eBay auction. I mean, here you go. It's a beautiful looking copy, cool red cover, deep reds on this one. And, you know, just went for 305 bucks. And that was just in October of last year. I mean, these are recent sales. And so it's really just about knowing that those books exist. And I mean, that's 6.0. Yeah, it's right in the middle here. You've got a few copies higher, but only 17 universal copies on census. I mean, these are the types of books, again, that I think you just, you know, if you, you got to be aware of them to know that there's something that, that you might be interested in. Now, the last one here, I, I, this skull art doesn't really appeal to me quite as much, but I just thought this is kind of a cool skull cover. It has the red background, everything kind of like a ghost go skull to it and uh but 16 copies on census and again one that just doesn't cost that much money <laughs> i mean we had january of 2022 a 65 selling for 273 dollars that, that, that had to be ebay yep that's where I, I feel like ebay is a place to watch for these these shadow comics because these are some deals and i think that it's just because people aren't really aware of them they probably don't have the watch list set up and the the books just go up for sale People don't really notice and they just, you know, sell without getting a lot of attention. And I mean, look at that. 6'5", 1945, World War II era book going for just $273. And that was just a year ago in January of 2022. So, yes, these books don't sell very often, but they also aren't selling for all that much money. So you have the opportunity, in my opinion, to get some pretty cool pre-code horror books and they aren't going to break the bank with a couple exceptions, <laughs> like uh, this one right here that we talked about, Super Mystery Comics Volume 6, Number 3. This is definitely one that will break the bank. This is an expensive book in pretty much any grade, but a lot of these other ones are pretty affordable, especially compared to other pre-code horror books, and these are super early. That's one of the other things to me that's really appealing about, about this run, Super Mystery Comics and the Shadow Comics run. Most of these books are in that World War II era. That is very early for this type of cover content. And so I think that's something that just makes them all that much more appealing. So hope you enjoyed that. Let's uh, jump back to the other camera. All right, so I hope you enjoyed seeing those books, maybe saw some 
new issues, some new covers, things that you maybe haven't seen before, some books that you might want to target, put on that watch list to go and try to try to pick up and find. And so if you enjoyed this video, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right around here, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.